Hey everyone, this is Gern Sumo, Senior Game Designer for NHL 25. Today I'm here to talk to you about Franchise Mode. So there's a few new things going into Franchise Mode. Everything from a brand new streamlined hub, box scores, game logs and split stats, contract clauses and CBA updates, revamped player and coach conversations, and some community requested tuning changes that we did. Over here, we have our brand new streamlined hub. It's a unique change from previous years. The goal here was to make less tabbing and surface more information for you as users to be able to get the most information possible to make educated decisions. So you'll see a brand new quick links on the left hand side here. Everything that's really important is showing up here. So all that stuff that needs to be done on a more regular basis is there at your fingertips. You'll also notice a bunch of new widgets that are on the screen. You'll have the projected goalie widgets. I'll show you the goalies that are about to start for that game, as well as on that right hand side, a matchup widget showing you how you're matching up against the opponent you're about to play, as well as the conference standings, division standings, your team leaders from four points, defense points, all the way down to rookie and goalie wins. And then you have your league leader stats as well. And then on top of that, we've added the ticker that's in the trade deadline mini game at the bottom, which will continuously feed you information as you go from screen to screen as well. You're able to access the calendar and then also tab through to go through all the various tabs that you would have had access last year, in addition to a few new tabs that allow you to talk to players and coaches. Going into box scores, we'll bring up all the games that are played in the NHL. So all 1300 plus games, or if you have a custom league, all however many games you've chosen to do. You can go to any game, not just your own teams. So you can go to any game and select a game and view the box score for that game. I can view the events that are from that game, who scored, what penalties were there, as well as the stats for each individual player on both teams and including the three stars as well. So you'll get a really good snapshot of every single game that happens in the NHL. And to feed into that stats motif that we got going on, we also have added new game logs and split stats for each individual player. So if I go into Elias Pedersen here, I can check out his full career stats and you'll notice that there's a new filter that's shown here, which is full career stats. Now you got game logs and split stats. So if we're going to game log, I can look at every single game that he has played in this year. The standard stats that we track from minutes, shots, goals, assists, points, the date of the game and the opponent of the game as well. So you can see how that player is doing against every single team and on a per game basis. In addition, you can also see the split stats. So you can see their last 10 games, their home split, their away split, their division split conference and on top of that their monthly and then their per team stat so how they have done against Florida how they've done against Edmonton Chicago etc and then lastly we've also added an awards tab to the player info and you'll be able to view any award that that player has won throughout their entire career so it's not just the last five years if you have Alex Ovechkin could be something that he won back in the 2010s all that shows up on this screen and for you to play and look at with throughout the course of franchise mode. One of our biggest fan requests is we added no move, no trade clauses to the game. In addition, we also overhauled our contract negotiation system to fit that in. So now you'll notice when you come into the free agency screen, you'll see an org interest bar. Every single player has a contract interest bar and an organization interest bar, and those will now dictate whether or not a player will want to sign with your team. So if a player has a very low organization bar, you may need to convince them to actually join your team. Those two bars now dictate and change who you target in free agency because it may not be possible for you to get the best free agent because they may not like your organization because of the taxes that you have, the market size that you have, your status as a contender. If they want to be playing on a championship team and you're a rebuilder, they may not want to join your team. Now you can offer them other incentives. You'll see that you'll see promises on the bottom right hand corner and player requests. Certain players will have requests that they would like to have like playing on the top line power play or playing in the first line. And you'll also be able to give out clauses. So you'll see that you can give out no movement clauses, no trade clauses, modified no trade clauses. You can give out different structures, whether reduced, 
full. It'll change the number of teams that you can or cannot be traded to. So we've added a lot of depth and a lot of fidelity to the contract negotiation engine that wasn't there before. I'll go into a player that doesn't want to sign with my team currently. Give you an example of what I mean in terms of you have to persuade that player. Now, Sam Bennett here doesn't want to join my team. You're able to do certain actions to potentially win them over. So you can charm them. You can gain some organization interest if they take to it. So in this case, it did, which is great. Now you can now talk about the contract or go into the organization and kind of pitch them on the organization. So if I go into here, I can now pitch them on the market size and the team status and persuade him into wanting to join my team and forego his expectation of preferring to play in a smaller market like Florida. So in this case, it's very risky to do so. It may negatively affect the organization, which may basically mean I'm out of the running completely. But if I do persuade him and it is successful, I can get him to join my team. So in this case, it's successful. And then if I go into organization, you'll see the bar go up to full. So now I have persuaded him into wanting to potentially join my team, which is huge. So he went from not interested at all to being persuaded into joining my team. And now I can go and offer him a contract. The first offer that you see here, the number of years will always be what that player wants. You can go through and select different years. They may or may not accept a one year deal. So if you do select one year or two years, they may say, I'm not interested in that and just end the conversation there. But if you go into the four years, they will let you go in and start negotiating. So negotiate will try to make a more team friendly deal. So the higher your organization bar, the more likely you can negotiate a player down in salary. You can also improve the offer if you like. This allows you to add extra money, clauses, promises to your contract offer. So if I wanna increase the salary here, I can increase it up by a lot or a little. So I'll add 2 million to a salary, but I can also improve the offer further by adding in a clause. So I can give them a full move, no trade, whatever it may be. I'm gonna give them a full no move clause as well as I'll promise them first line minutes. So he will more than likely now want to sign because I have given him the world. You can also table the contract as well. So if you think you've negotiated a deal with the player to the sense, but you want to try out and sign another player just in case, you can table the deal. There is a risk to this, obviously. If another team steps in and offers a contract to them, they may get taken and may sign with another team. So it's kind of a risk reward on your aspect of it too, whether or not you're willing to take that chance. So in this case, Sam Bennett accepts your offer because it was so good. I gave him a full no move. I gave him 2 million more and I also gave him a first line promise. So he's now on my team. So I can literally convince him from not wanting to join my team to joining my team through the power of the conversation engine. So next up with the addition of no move and no trade clauses, obviously when you want to go and trade a player that has a trade clause, you're gonna need to figure out what team they can or cannot be traded to. So if we go into Aaron Ekblad here, you'll see he has a modified no trade clause and you can go into the new contract info screen that shows you the trade clause the years that are left on the trade clause and the teams that you can trade that player to so on the right hand side there's a tradable team list he can be traded to 20 teams and there's 12 teams that he has a no trade for so if i go to anaheim or boston or buffalo he is an eligible player for me to actually put on the trade block if I put him on a team that he doesn't have a trade clause for, I would need to actually convince Ekblad to waive his no trade clause. So you can go into the proposed trade screen, the, select the player that you want to trade, and it'll automatically have you initiate a conversation with them. You'll see that I'll have to persuade the player into waiving their no trade clause. It failed, which means I can no longer have Ekblad be eligible to be traded to the Carolina Hurricanes. The other way to get them to talk about their clauses or their options is to actually go in through the new franchise hub so if I went into Matthew Kachuk here I have different options to have him potentially waive his clause or change his clause for the year I'm able to get him to maybe give me a list of one team two teams three teams or outright waive his no trade clause so I'm gonna ask him maybe give me one team that he would want to potentially go for and in this case he actually did so now I can go into Matthew Kachuk's player card and figure out who he actually wants to be traded to now you can see that he has a modified no trade clause but going to his contract info he wants to go to the Montreal Canadiens. So I can now add him to the block for the Montreal Canadiens and then you'll be able to make a trade. The conversation engine allows you to kind of have a little bit of flexibility and how much you want that player to waive, whether it be fully waive their clause or to kind of select a certain amount of teams. It allows you to pick a riskier or less riskier option to give the player still some agency as well.
Another new feature that we've added is our brand new conversation engine. You've seen a little bit of it in the no move, no trade, but we wanted to make every conversation feel important and have a meaningful impact on your team. So gone are the ice time conversations where players are complaining about things. It's now more of a proactive system where you are now assigning players goals or trying to make that player better or try to fit into your system as you need to. If I go into Orchinski here, you'll notice that there's two options for me to select from season goal or on ice play. Each of these has their own subset of items that you'll be able to select through for season goals. This actually influences player development, something that in the past you as a user didn't really have a lot of influence over. Now you will with season goals. So you can select a season goal. You'll have two options of short-term goals. So these are half season goals. They're shorter goals and they give you less of a reward potentially. And then we have long-term goals, which allow you to perform a stat challenge, an award challenge, and then an X-Factor challenge. These challenges allow you to give a player potentially an X-Factor ability, whether it be a zone or a superstar ability. Award challenges are asking a player to win an award. And by winning that award, they may gain attribute points as well. And then you have stat challenges which you may ask a player to score X amount of goals, assists, or plus minus or block shots, and they will gain potential ratings impact onto themselves based off of completing that goal. Now, it isn't that it's a hard line, so as long as I'm close, he'll get some of that reward to passing, but he may not get the full amount. So it is really forgiving in that sense, but you do want to get as close as you possibly can to that marker to help influence that player. So in this case, I'll set a goal to have him score 40 assists and then once that's in there you'll be able to check out the goal in the morale screen as you sim through a season and you look at their stats and see how they're doing. Now that I've assigned a player goal to that player I can also go into the on ice play and potentially have them change their play style or the position. You'll notice on the upper right hand side of the screen that you have something called adaptability. Every player has adaptability rating. This adaptability rating allows us to control how likely a player will potentially adhere to being able to change to a new playing style or a position that they play. The younger the player, it'll actually make it a little bit more easier for that player to be a little bit more malleable and a little bit more easier for them to learn that new play style or position. So an older player will be a little bit more set in their ways and may not be able to switch to that position or play style, but true to real life as well. So in this instance here, we're able to look at these two options of play style and position. I'll select to change his position. It'll give me options to be either straight up, change him out of left defense. I can move him to right defense as well. These are both persuades and they have different factors that weigh in. So in this case, I want to add a secondary position position. The lower his defensive awareness rating, the harder it will be to convince him. If I want to change his position, a player's with higher defensive awareness rating will be harder to convince. So players that are really good at defense, they probably don't want to move out from defense. But if the player has a lower defensive awareness, you may be able to get them to change to a forward. Here I'll ask Korczynski to change his position. So in this case, that persuade failed. In many cases, the persuade may or may not work, but you do have the ability to change a player's position and play style. It all has a multitude of different factors that go into it. Again, we really wanted to give you as the user the ability to have more fidelity, more control over the players to fit within the system that you're trying to build. So in addition, you can also talk to your head coach. You can talk about your preseason or your game plan for the team. And these essentially are buffs to your team that you get for the season, whether it be conditioning, strength training, skill training, five on five focus, power play, penalty kill, video sessions. So all of these will have different buffs and debuffs. I've selected power play. This will give my team a buff for the power play, but also have a debuff on my penalty kill. So in this case, I got him to adhere to that preseason focus. I can go back in and talk to him also about uh, the game plan um, that he has. So we can talk about preferred lines as he is locked until the regular season. And I'll get into that as well. Ice time locations also locked until the regular season, but this will allow you to allocate whether or not you want your team to roll four lines, three lines, top heavy. It allows you to kind of manipulate that and have the best possible situation for your team. So now that we're here in the regular season, I'm now able to chat with my coach. So if I'm in the edit line screen, I can hit the Y button to go into strategies and then bring up the coach card from here. 
I can go into this meeting availability and then chat with the coach about their game plan. So I can now talk to them about their preferred lines or ice time allocation, as that's no longer locked. I can get them to potentially change those things. So in this case, I want him to reorganize or lock players into certain lines. I can now do so. I persuaded them into being open to it. If in the instance where it fails, you can still force the coach to go through this flow. You will lose morale as a trade-off, but at the end of the day, you are the GM and you hire the coach, so you are able to brute force your way through it. So in this case, I want to look at my forwards and I want to have my line two center be Elias Pettersson. So if I go into line two and center, I can now lock in Elias Pettersson as the center for that line. Now I can also make his left wing. In this instance, I'll just put Jake DeBrusque. And then if I go into that line screen again, you'll notice that when I hit best lines now, those players should now get into that slot. You now see Elias Pettersson and Jake DeBrusque in that role. So if I move Pettersson down to the fourth line here and then I re hit best lines, it will always lock them into that line. So if he gets hurt and comes back into the lineup, it will remember that and put him back into the right spot. So you can lock all your lines exactly how you want it and really help the usability for playing with injuries on. So you're able to have your lines always constructed in the way that you want them. And the coach will make sure that they do best lines in that manner. It is quite a cumbersome thing. So this was our way with the power of the conversation engine to allow you to actually lock in players into those lines. Another feature that we added to really help the roster sharing community was the addition of draft picks to the player movement screen. Now you're able to trade five years worth of draft picks in the player movement screen to keep up with the real world as you're waiting for the latest roster update from us. So in this case, I can trade Anaheim's and Edmonton's first round pick to the Buffalo Sabres. And then you'll be able to go in and see that Buffalo has Anaheim and Edmonton's first round pick. And you're able to upload this roster file to roster sharing. And then you'll be able to have others download it with the correct draft picks. And you can then start your franchise mode when the latest trade comes out and you're waiting for the roster update. You'll be able to make the adjustment yourself and then go into franchise mode and start your franchise mode if you need to. That's a big change there, as well as we've added a few more elite potential products prospects into the draft, make the league as you get later into later years, refresh that player pool, have the overall be around the same amount as well. So we added a lot to franchise mode this year. We had a lot of fun working on the game and we can't wait for you to pick up early access on September 27th.